Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Bully Scholarship Edition. If you enjoy this video, please become the principal of a school and expel any student who doesn't choose to identify as a pelican for their gender, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. And so I load up Bully and the nostalgia hits me harder than a drunk uncle. These loading screens are just classic Rockstar too, but they're the family friendly versions. Like in Bully, you get a quirky little loading picture of a kid failing a test, whereas Grand Theft Auto's loading screens used to get me in trouble when I was a kid. Mum would walk into my room and bam, a huge picture of a prostitute seductively licking her lips was suddenly on my screen. Anyway, so basically you play as Jimmy Hopkins, a little rascal that keeps getting kicked out of schools and so his parents sent him to the notorious Bullworth Academy. This is one of the toughest boarding schools in the country and is known for getting kids back on the right track. A real put down the crack pipe and pick up the 2B pencil mentality. It's a pretty generic storyline really, but it's classic and timeless. It's like like the Titanic or Backdoor Girls Volume 14. The principal, aka Dr. Crabblesnitch, tells me to stay in line and not to cause too many problems. Yeah, no worries mate, you can trust little Jimmy. So my first mission is to go to my bedroom and I honestly think I can crush this. I head down the stairs of the main school building but then remember you can make Jimmy skip and I proceed to do this as nothing shows all the kids you're cool like a majestic ass skip. As this is the toughest school in the country, it shares similarities to prison so the first thing I need to do is knock out the kingpin to earn everyone's respect. I locate the person who is quite obviously the kingpin and punch her little 12 year old brace face jaw. Unfortunately, Bullworth Academy has a zero tolerance for beating small children, which is super lame and I am caught by a prefect moments later and fail the mission. You know it's time to reevaluate your life when you fail a mission that is literally just walking to your bedroom. So round two, I decide I'll play it a little bit cooler as there'll be plenty of time to beat children later on. On my way I get sidetracked again because little Jimmy is at that age where he wants to start talking to girls. I select the thumbs up response and he drops this red hot pickup line. So, do you like, uh, stuff? I can whip you with my ribbon! Well, depending on what she means by whip us with her ribbon, that either went really badly or really well. No time to get freaky though, it's time to play the objective. I make my way towards the boys dormitory and I'm greeted by a gang of bullies and they want to fight me. So with little choice, I square up with one of them, but fortunately Jimmy is a very good fighter. I actually used to 1v1 quite a bit myself in school, but it was on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, not actual fist fighting, so not quite as badass. Though I did often insult my opponents by saying I finger banged their mum, so yeah, you can tell I was also a virgin. I win the fight, but then Randy Orton's larger brother comes out of nowhere and quickscopes me in the face with his gorilla-like fist. Luckily a teacher rocks up to break it up, but hot damn, this school is just a fight club, I swear. I enter the dorm and am greeted by a guy called Gary Smith, who apparently has ADHD and gives off some serious younger Hitler vibes, so I decide he'll be my new best friend forever. And yeah, besides the early sociopath signs, Gary is a really top bloke. He shows me around the dormitory and how to use the vending machine for some reason. It's a real bromance in the making. He then introduces me to his other friend Petey who looks like he loves his life here and then I change into my school uniform as the teachers and prefects get you in trouble if you wear casual clothes. Gotta love that realism. Just walking around campus is quite interesting, seeing poor kids get bullied. I don't think in today's politically correct climate you could even make a game called Bully anymore. If Rockstar wanted to develop something similar again, they'd have to make it set at like a church band camp. And instead of fist fights, pranks and swirlies, it would be prayer circles, rosary beads, and like, um, I guess covering up child molestation scandals. Anyway, my boy Gary keeps showing me the ropes and then we run into a thick girl named Eunice and some little scallywag has stolen her chocolate. So I volunteer to get them back for her. I find the culprit in the bathroom and handle the situation like a professional bully hunter. I spit in my hand and rub it in his face. I bring the chocolates back to Eunice and she's really happy and I feel good for doing a good deed. And then the situation escalates out of nowhere and we just start making out. I then whisper in her ear, hey babe, I have level 99 ancient magic and old school runescape and it just gets too hot and steamy after that so I leave. Gary finishes his tour by showing me the various cliques of the school. You've got the nerds, you've got the preppy rich kids who shelve ecstasy and fap to Ralph Lauren catalogs, you've got the greasers who love cars but can't understand why yelling 
yelling, hey sexy, out their car window isn't getting them laid. And finally, you've got the jocks who either grow up to become rich, successful quarterbacks on steroids or grow up to become mall car park security guards also on steroids. So as bully is set in a school, you actually have to go to class. I mean, you can just wag if you like and avoid teachers and prefects, but the class mini games are actually pretty fun and you earn useful rewards. First up is chemistry. I had to study chemistry in high school and I stuck the periodic table on my bedroom roof and memorized it and took the class really seriously. And just kidding, I failed that class hard. Science is for nerds. And anyway, the only chemical elements you need to know about are hydrogen and oxygen because you combine those two malakas together and boom, you get H2O, aka water, aka stay hydrated. And so I passed the class and in turn learn how to make firecrackers. Naturally, I immediately throw one of these firecrackers at a group of students for the banter and then my science teacher catches me. Didn't really think that one through. The principal is like, Jimmy, you big unit, this is your last chance. No more misbehaving or you'll be punished. All right, big dog, I'll pull my head in, you know. Probably. So now it's time for my afternoon class and we've got English. Come to think of it, I didn't take English very seriously at school either. In fact, I didn't take much of school that seriously and look what I've achieved. I'm making questionable content about a video game that is 13 years old. Can I get a heck yeah in the chat boys? I pass English and unlock the ability to apologize to people if they're angry at me. I will never use this ability in the actual game though as apologizing is for weak communists. The study time's over though, it's time to play. Or at Bullworth Academy, me, not so much play, rather watch on as kids turn this esteemed education facility into Tekken 7. I see a nerd being beaten up and I suppose a wave of compassion comes over me or something as I decide to intervene. I hit him a couple of times and then run off as a prefect is getting too close for comfort. I run back to the boy's dormitory and he follows me but luckily seems to suffer from asthma and completely loses his breath. I see my opportunity to pounce on the weak lad and I take it well. I'm actually having so much fun returning to school you you know, actually passing chemistry, kissing girls, and of course kicking this young man almost to death. Though it's all character building and though he is suffering some pretty serious internal bleeding right now, he'll thank me for this when he's 40 years old and finally overcomes the PTSD. So yeah, let's enter an epic montage moment so that we can fast track this video to Halloween. First, I sat up in a tree firing a slingshot at the NFL team while they trained. I pulled the fire alarm and then when everyone was evacuating, I threw firecrackers at them. I found out I was 164th Hispanic, so I started dressing appropriately. I made out with another girl and Jimmy even went in for a little ass grab, the cheeky stud. I went to gym class, which was just more senseless violence. This school has some serious underlying aggression issues. I escorted a nerd to the bathroom so that he could take a leak in peace. And then Eunice comes out of a cubicle with a 10 year old boy. And I don't know whether to high five the little tacker or call the police. I made out with the hottest girl in school. Hell yeah, virtual babes love this pelican. But then my other girlfriend whose ass I grabbed need me in the balls. Being a player ain't easy fam. I then engaged in one of my favorite activities I like to do in real life, beating the shit out of a hobo. Then it was time for music class, which was just the Walmart version of Guitar Hero. I stole a fire extinguisher and sprayed it at a prefect, which was hilarious until he busted me. I then had to serve detention and mow the lawn, like literally on a ride on mower. It was all worth it though, because then I met a dog that had taken a few too many amphetamines. I did a few missions that involved me brutally thrashing other students with a baseball bat, like this violence is honestly nuts. Soon I'll just be shooting fourth graders. Wow, okay, that just got too real. I romantically walked my hot girlfriend back to her dorm and we talked the whole time and it turns out she's super annoying. Then she paid me $10, which kind of made me feel like an Uber driver and question how real the love between us really is. A short time later, I retrieved this girl's diary and she was happy about that and then we made out and she paid me $20. Honestly, I'm starting to feel a bit objectified at this point, like I'm not a male gym. Gigolo, I have feelings, dog. But I did acquire a skateboard so I can just go down to the skate park and project my insecurities onto innocent little Razor scooter kids. But now, lads and lasses, it's Halloween. And you know what that means. It's time to pull off some super epic cool pranks. I get into my vanilla and kind of cute skeleton costume and my BFF Gary dresses up as Stalin. Like seriously, the signs are right there. When this kid grows up, he is going to commit a genocide or like build a nuclear weapon or perhaps something 
something even worse, like he might even start hacking in first person shooter games. So we head outside and PT chooses to wear a pink bunny rabbit costume. Like at some point chief, you've got to realise you're making yourself an easy target. But anyway, before we try to pull off the big prank, we have to complete a few smaller ones. It's all fun though, I put a kick me sign on someone's back which always gets a cheap laugh or two, I throw some eggs at unsuspecting trick or treaters and then they're all covered in egg and it's really funny and silly. And then I beat up a guy so badly I shatter most of his facial skeleton and he ends up having to spend two months in intensive care. Dude, pranks are sweet. But now it's time for the main event. Firstly, we feed the amphetamine dog some rancid meat so that it evacuates its bowels. Gary then gathers the feces in a bag and we make our way over to the teacher's lounge. We then light the bag on fire and pull the fire alarm so that the gym teacher comes out in a rage, stamping on the bag and getting his shoes covered in dog crap. GG you noob and I also unlock a red ninja costume for my efforts. Thanks for watching you absolute legends and a massive thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel and who really are the reason I'm able to do this. Have yourselves a good week, until next time and as always, stay classy.